your virtual desktop supports two load balancing methods. Load balancing. Load balancing in what? Well, users request to access the session in the session host, right? Session host is multiple identical virtual machines running. So all that request coming, where it will lend that load balancing. Okay, now we know the load balancing, what load balancing we're talking about. So let's, let's try to understand what are these two methods. Well, as you can see already, uh, for the sake of time, I just draw all the pictures, load balancing, these are the two methods, okay? Well, each method determines which session host will host a user's session when they connect to a resource in a host pool. Hope it's clear now, right? So now, uh, let's, let's understand the breadth first. As I have marked here, breadth first load balancing allows you to evenly distribute user sessions across the session host in host pool. Let me show you on pins. For example, these are your session host inside the host pool. And this is your AVD. And request comes from uh, here, let's suppose. Request comes. We already covered what is AVD. It's a pass service. So this is your pass service, which runs what? Which runs these components. Web access, gateway, connection broker, diagnostics, extensibility components. We have all... Uh, covered all these components in the previous video. So this load balancing part is, is for connection broker. So when the request comes here, it will go to this one, let's suppose. Then if the next request comes, it will go to the next one. If another request comes, it will go to another one, okay, like this. So what exactly is happening here, if you try and understand, uh, request is going uh, or it's, it's spreading. User sessions are spreading in, in a direction like breadth, right? It's going in this direction or any direction. Once this done, then the next request comes to this one, another request comes to this one. So it's more like spreading out across the session host, okay? Now, if you are wondering when we choose this kind of load balancing over depth or which organization does that, establish this kind of module, or load balancing model. Well, this method is ideal for organization that want to provide the best experience for users connecting to their pooled virtual desktop environment, okay? Now, question came, how exactly the new session host gets selected in breadth first? Well, if you want to know more, it's really good. So let's try to explain. The bread first method first queries session hosts that allow new connections. Okay. So the very first thing out of all out of this, let's suppose there are, there are many session hosts here. Which one, which one allows the new connection? The very first thing is either this one allows the new connection or this one allows the new connection. Whichever session host is allowed the new connections, all those session hosts will be selected first, right? Now, the method then selects a session host randomly from half 
the set of session host with the least number of sessions. Okay, I said half. Why half? Let me give you an example. If they are, let's suppose there are nine machines, okay? Let me, let me create some more. Like th there is three, uh, we create four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There, all these machines are there. Okay, and e each of these machines has a different number of sessions. Let's suppose to make it easy, let's suppose uh, machine one has 11 session uh, and machine two has 12 session. Similarly, three has 13 session, four has 14 session and it goes on up to 19, okay? Now, what half means here? A new session you create wouldn't automatically go to the first machine because it has least number of sessions. Instead, it can go to any of the first five machines with the lowest number of sessions. So what it will do, it will, it will simply go ahead and see, uh, get the half number of machines here, four and five, least number of session out of these fives, any one would be selected randomly. I hope breadth first, uh, load balancing clear now. So let's explore depth first, okay? So depth first load balancing allows you to saturate a session host with user sessions in a host pool. It's clear, right? Once the first session reaches its session limit threshold, the load balancer directs any new user's connections to the next session host in the host pool until it reaches its limit and so on. Let me show you here in the paints in the same way. Let me color it in the same way. Let's suppose request comes. What this uh, load balancing, this is depth method. So it will go to this one, let's suppose. Now the second request comes. It is a depth first, so it will, what it will do? If you're saying it will send it to the same machine again to saturate the session host, you're right. It will again send it here. The third one will come, it will again send it here. Fourth, will, fourth one will come, it will again send it here until it reaches the threshold you have selected, maybe 10, 15, 20, it depends, right? in your session host. And the same, the same thing, if you compare the breadth, request was spreading out to the inner breadth, okay? So now the same question comes, when we have to choose this method over breadth, right? And whom we have to uh, suggest or recommend this method? Well, if you see this method is ideal for cost, conscious organizations that want more granular control on the number of virtual machines they have allocated for a host pool, right? Because they're utilizing this machine to the entirety first and then going to the other machines. Anyways, the depth first method. Okay, before I talk about that, uh, let's see. We ask the question how this is happening in the bread. The same thing, same thing comes in mind, the question come in mind, how exactly this is getting selected. Well, the, in the depth first method, it first queries session hosts that allow new connection, just like in the breadth, and haven't gone over the maximum session limit. Okay, because each session has some limit to, to cater the request, right? The method, this depth one, then selects the session host with highest number of sessions because it has to saturate it first. If there is a tie, the method select the first session host in the query, okay? I hope this is, this is clear now. Uh, I tried to make a pretty good explanation. Now the question came, can we have both type of load balancing in our host pool? Well, of course not. <laughs> So answer is no, we can have only one type, right? 
I saw people wondering if there is any commonality between the two, depth and the breadth. Well, the answer is yes. Now, what is the common behavior? Well, if a user already has a session in the host pool and is reconnecting to the session, the load balancer will successfully redirect them to the session host with their existing session, okay? In both the, in both the cases, both the methods. And this behavior applies even if the session host properties like allow new connection property is set to false. Okay, in both the in both the cases, they will send it to the same session host. And if a user doesn't already have a session in the host pool, then the load balancer won't consider session host whose allow new connection property is set to false during load balancing. So these applies, these are the common behavior in both the uh, load balancing methods. All right, well, that's, that's, that's about it in this video. Let's explore ABD much deeper in the upcoming videos. Thank you for watching and you guys have a good day.